Hey everybody. So today's tutorial is going to focus on how do we get our descriptive stats easiest in all of the different programs we're going to be using. We'll start off with Excel, then we'll move on to JASP, we'll try it in SPSS, and finally in R. And I'm going to show you that there's a lot simpler ways to get their descriptive statistics than what we saw in the last sets of videos. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is open up Excel. But what I want us to do is we're going to add in an analysis tool pack in Excel. There's a link here that I've given um, right up here. So if you go to Microsoft.com, it will just sort of show you how to load the analysis tool pack, but I'm going to show you how to do it right here. Then what we'll do is we'll open up our descriptive data that we'd been working on previously. So let me open up the Excel file that's got our data from our descriptives that we calculated last time. Here's our data where we've previously calculated all of our descriptive variables. Now, before we add in the analysis tool pack, I just want to see what happened. Like I asked you last time, what happens if I add in Yao Ming's data into our mail data? Now, we're going to click over here and add 229. And what we're going to see is all of these values are going to automatically update. Click on that. And the reason is because when I had originally calculated them, I selected this whole area. And while it doesn't calculate any blanks, if I add new values into the blank spaces, it will update with those new values. Now, we see our mean gets updated to about 184 centimeters. And our standard deviation goes up substantially from about 7.6 to 13.6. Okay, so let's get rid of Yao Ming's data again. I'm just going to click on that and hit delete. Okay, so now we're going to add in the analysis tool pack. So in order to do this, I'm going to go over to the file tab, click on that, I'm going to go down, select options which brings up a window that looks like this. Then I'm going to select add-ins, which is the second from the bottom in the left-hand panel here, add-ins. And again, right down at the bottom, we have an option to manage Excel add-ins, and we're gonna just click on go. What that does is brings up another window here, and we see add-ins available, and I'm going to select analysis tool pack and analysis tool pack VBA and click OK. Now, if we go over to our data tab, click on that, we now see over on the right hand side, we have an analysis section here with a data analysis button. And all I'm going to do is click on that. And that will open up a new window of data analysis that allows me to select various different things. We want what was already highlighted there, descriptive statistics. I'm going to click on OK. Now it asks me for an input range, which says what are my values I want to do descriptive statistics on. I could tell it manually. I want A1 through B21. Or if I just select this little icon, I can drag and select the range of cells that I want. Click it again. And we see that the range of A1 to B21 is in this box. It asks how I want to group. I'm going to have it grouped by columns because my two groups are in two different columns. And I'm going to select the box that says there's labels in the first row. That's my males and females. And then it asks me, where do I want my output? So I'm just going to say, leave it as a new worksheet. And I'm just going to click on summary statistics. That's my output. And then I'm just going to click OK. And what we see is it's created a new worksheet. We see I have a new sheet tab down at the bottom. And I've got my summary statistics. I'm just going to drag these columns a little wider by grabbing their edges so we can read them. And what we see is our mean is 181.75, what we had before. And it calculates our standard error. Our median, mode, standard deviation, sample variance, kurtosis, skewness, range, 
min, max, sum, and count for males and females separately, just with that one symbol. Okay, so we're gonna go and we're gonna do the same thing in Jath next. All right, I'm gonna close Excel and I'll save the file. Okay, so let's go and open up Jasp. So I'm just going to click my Windows key or search for it in my um, applications. I'm going to just type in Jasp. And we see that it pops up. In Mac, you can just go to Launchpad and open it up from there. And it should look pretty much the same. In but what we see is an interface that says, Welcome to Jasp, and tells us about it. So um, what we want to do first is click on the little uh, menu, and Jasp likes to use CSV files like we were using in R. So comma separated value. So I'm going to open up our heights data dot CSV. So let's open this up. I'll open it from, you open it from where you have it. And I'm going to just open up that file. And what you should see is that you've got your male data and your female data, and it looks just like we've seen before. Now, this is reasonably simple in JASP because you'll have a few options along the top here. Descriptives, t-tests, ANOVAs, etc. We want descriptives. Let's click on that. So it opens up a little window here. It says descriptive statistics and a little box over here that says variables. And all I'm going to do is select the variable I want, males, and I'm going to click to move it over into the variables. Click it. And what we see is it creates those descriptive statistics immediately. I can click on females and move it over as well. And now we've got that other set. Great, super quick. Mean, standard deviation, maximum, and minimum. So that's not a lot of um, statistics at this point. But what we see is we've got another option where we can click on a drop down here that says statistics. So what would I like? I'm going to scroll down a little bit. I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to select great. Quartiles, that's what I'd like. Um, medium, mode, how about standard error, interquartile range, range, variance, skewness, and kurtosis. There it is. Now I've got all of this, the descriptive statistics provided to me right away. Another nice thing about JASP is that you can create plots very easily of descriptive statistics. So if we see we have another option here of plots, I can drop that down. So what we see is we've got basic plots. Let's just look at those to start. And I'm going to look, I'm going to click on distribution plots. And now what we see is it's created histograms for males and for females separately, just like that. Now we can select a bunch of different graphs and we'll get into those later. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all there is uh, for JASP. You can now, if you like, save this file as a JASP file. So I can select in wherever I would like to sa save it, call it heights.jasp, save that, and then all of these options will be already saved for you for next time when you open that file. So now let's do the same thing. But instead of the wide file format, where we've got males and females in different columns, let's do the long format, where we've got all of our data in one column, and then our groups in the second column. So I'm just going to simply open a new file. Now I'm going to find the file that I need, and it's called heights.long.csv. Open that. It opens up a new window and imports the data. Now, remember, we've got in this file our heights, and then in another column, we've got M or F for males and females. Now, again, I can just select descriptives. And now if I click on height and add that into variables, now we see we've got all of the descriptives. But now, Sex here, I can't really add that in the same way because all I get is valid values of 36. So I'm going to move it back. 
Instead, I'm going to use sex as our splitting variable. So I'm going to put it down at the bottom here. Now we see we got males and females, and then we can select statistics and plots on the same data in the same way. So now let's do this same thing in SPSS. This time I'm not going to save. I'm going to open up SPSS. Same way, either look for it in your launch pad or in your applications and windows. Okay, and SPSS, when it opens up, it will open up with a window that looks very similar to what we saw in Excel. It's got some menu items at the top, a few different icons, and first thing we need to do is load some data in. Now, what we could do is we can import data from various different types. So we could either do Excel or CSV or text or other types. But what I like to do is I like to copy paste data directly from Excel. So if I open Excel back up and then I select my male and female data and I copy it using control C and then I come back over to SPSS and I paste it either by using control V or hitting edit, paste. We see our values come in. Now, what we see is that um, it sees that they are numbers, but it doesn't give them any type of heading. So that's why we can use what is down at the bottom here is our variable view. So we have our data view, which we're in right now, and we'll click on variable view. And what we see is a few different options here. But what I want to draw your attention to is we can change the name of our variable. So here, I'm just going to call it males. We know it's male height. And I'm going to call the other one females. We can see that we can change the type or the width or the decimals. I'm just going to make sure it knows what type of measurement scale we're using. So it could be ordinal, nominal, or scalar. And scalar is interval or ratio type data. So I'm just going to select that for both of those. And I'll go back to my data view. Now, there's a couple of different ways in which we can cal calculate descriptive statistics in SPSS. First, we go up to the Analyze menu. And click on that, and we see we've got a lot of options here. One of them, the second from the top, being descriptive statistics. So I'm just going to click on that and then click over to descriptives. And we see a window pops up, and I want to, just like we did in, J in, in JASP, is I want to select males and females, and I'm just going to hold down shift while I click on both, and that will select them both at the same time, and move them over into the variables box that I want. And I'm just going to click OK. And what we see is that will pop up basic descriptive statistics in an output window that gives us an N, minimum, maximum, mean, and standard deviation. OK, great. But let's get a little bit more um, descriptive statistics. So let's go back up to Analyze, click on Descriptives, and then this time I'm going to select Options. And I'm going to select the things that I want. So maybe, I don't worry about the sum, but maybe the variance, range, standard error. And let's look at kurtosis and skewness. And then I'm going to hit continue and then click OK. And what we see is we get a more in-depth set of descriptive statistics. So now we've got our standard error, we've got variance and values of skewness and kurtosis. And we'll talk about those at a later date. There's one other way we can calculate our descriptive statistics. It's a little bit more complex, but it gives you even more data. So the way we do that is we click on, again, Analyze Descriptives. But we're going to select, instead of Descriptives, we're going to select Explore. And when you do that, I get a different type of box here. But I still want to select both males and females and put them into the Depend. And it's going to ask down here, do I want to display statistics or plots? 
or both. And I'll leave it on both. So let's select the type of statistic you want. So first, I just want descriptors. We won't worry about the rest of it. Plots. What types of plots do we want? Well, let's select not stem and leaf, but histogram. And we're going to select normality plots with tests and hit continue. And then I'm going to select options. Now, in options here, it asks me what to do with missing values. And it's going to ask if I want to exclude cases list wise or pair wise. And I'm going to select for this type of data at this point, exclude cases pair wise. We'll see that that is the way it works out that we get the right data reported. Continue. Now I can go ahead and click OK and look at the data that comes out. So what we see is that we get descriptive statistics for males and females that include the mean and standard deviation that should be uh, what we have seen in the previous uh, program. Um, Confidence intervals, variance, standard deviation, range, interquartile range, and then values of skewness and kurtosis. Further down, we see there's tests of normality. And we've got two different types, right? The vodka kind, so the Kalmalagarov Smirnoff, and the Shapiro Wilk, which we see in other programs as well. And if these Values are significant. We would usually look at superior will. We know that they are significantly non-normal. Here we find that, like we said, our data is reasonably normally distributed. So we're okay with this. Now we see we get a histogram for the males, and we see that we get the same for females. So you can look at those on your. So that's really how you do all of those stats and the descriptive stats in SPSS. I'm going to close this, ask if it wants to save, I'm not going to. Okay, so let's move on to R. So what we'll do is let's open up our R project file that we had last time. Now the easiest way to do that is just by opening R Studio and it will automatically open up the last R project that you used. So I'm just going to type in our studio and open it up. Okay, and you can see it's right where we left off last time. So remember, we have our data frames with all of our data. So I can click on each of these if I want. So for example, heights.long will show us that long format data and heights.wide has it in the wide format. And I can just click at the tab for example week one.r, but maybe I should get that in new because we're going to be continuing on with this. So what I'm going to do is just select some of this and I'm going to add some other stuff to it. In fact, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to paste it down here, and I'm going to remove all of the things that we've done in. Now, the first thing we need to do is we're going to use a package that isn't included in the base version of R, but it's really easy to add more packages that people have developed um, that add extra functionality into R. So the first package that we want to install is called Psych. So the way we do that is we can do it with the command line, but there's an easy way to do that by using this tab here that says packages. And I just want to click on the install tab here. So I click on the install button, and then I can search for what I want. And this one that I want is called psych. So P S Y C H, there it is. So I want psych. And just click on install. And what we can see is it's going to start doing a few different things. It's downloading and installing packages, and that tells me the downloading downloaded successfully and unpacked. Great. Okay, so every time that we now need to use a package that we've added, what we need to do is we need to load that library, and we just do it with a library function. So 
what we're going to be doing is we'll be starting up here. So let's do this. Um, library psych. And I'm just going to run that command. Control enter. And now that has loaded the psych library. In fact, I could take that, cut it, and put it right at the very top. So whenever I run my whole script, it's going to load that package at the very beginning. But let's just put it there for now. Okay. And then what we're going to do is put a type of data frame and attach which one do we want. And we'll select long. Okay, so all it's going to do is attach a data frame and detach a data frame. Now what the psych library allows us to do is use a function called describe. So it's just going to be describe height. Now I'm going to select these. I don't need to use library again because it's already loaded. You only need to do that once each time you restart R. And I'll run that. So what we see is it gives us our data, but it is for the whole set. Because it's males and females combined, we see our height and mean is 172, but it gives us mean, standard deviation, median, trimmed, max, range, skew, and kurtosis, and standard error. All in one simple command. So instead of doing all of these other previous commands we had done, we can do it with simply by using describe and on our using the psych library. Now, if I want to, I can split this up by using the describe by function. So let's just add in a dot by. And now I need to tell it by what. So I want to describe height by sex. Now let's run all of these commands. Now what we see is we get variable group F, I get my mean standard deviation, etc. from females, and then one for males as well. Okay, so that's one way we can um, run descriptive statistics very easily in R. Let's look at one other way. So I'm going to install a different package, and this one is called paste CS. So click on install. P A S T E, there it is. Paste CS. Install. Now we can see it's going to unpack and install the library. Now I need to load the library. I'm just going to copy this section again and paste it. And this time I'm going to put in library paste CS. But again, I'm only going to run it once. So I'm going to just take that one and run it, and it's loaded that library. Now, again, we're going to um, we're going to attach heights.long. Now we're going to use a function called stat dot disk. So stat disk, and then I'm just going to ask it for height. And then we'll run this and see what we get. Okay, so that is not very friendly in the way that it's now come out for us. Okay, so let's see if we can do something a little bit different here. What I want to do is use a different command Options SciPen equals 999. And what that will do is output numbers that are a lot more readable. So let's do that. Let's run this command, these commands again. Now, what we see is I've got number valid 36, right? And we see all of the values here again are ones that I've gotten for the entire group. So now what I'd like to do is use this with different groups. So instead of heights.long, maybe I'll just use 
heights.m for males. I can run this. And it gives me all of those values. Again, I've got 16. My um, standard deviation is 76. So all the different things we've seen before, right? It's giving us all of those variables that we've seen before. I can do the same thing for f for females and then just run this. So what you see is we've got a single command now by either using the psych library or the paste cs library that can give us all of our descriptive stats. The last thing with the, the stat desk um, that I want to show you is that it's got a couple of different other options here. So first of all, I want to say basic equals f. And what that's going to do is just make sure it doesn't give me these number of valid or number of null and these, these values that I don't need at the beginning. The other thing I want to do is go norm equals true. And this will give me tests of normality. I run this. And what we see is now we get our median, mean, standard error, confidence intervals, variance, etc. But we also get skewness, kurtosis, and normality tests with a p-value of 632. Okay, so hopefully that shows you how to do these things. From here, what I'd like you to do is open up a file that I've placed on Brightspace called Core Temp. Dot csv that's a comma separated values and see if you can now run the descriptive stats in excel and jasp and r for this file as well there's a first column that is sex and they are coded as one or two and that's males and females so you can try separating that way the other thing you can do is if you want to open up this file you can then copy paste into SPSS and try it. Or I've also provided a file called SAV and that's SPSS um, data file type. So you can open up that file directly in SPSS or copy paste directly into SPSS. Okay, so hopefully that gets you started with doing some easier descriptive statistics in all four of the programs we've mentioned already.